Thanks for putting that in the uh, in the chat. Um, I am obviously a huge proponent of Canva. I love using Canva. And there are a lot of opportunities to use it in the classroom as a teacher, but also as, um, as a teacher when you're working with students and allowing students to create in Canva. Today, we are going to focus more on student use of Canva, but we can touch on how teachers can use it too. Real quick, uh, Karina, do you have a Canva account or are you new to? Oh, you have it as well, that's perfect. So our norms for today, I'd like for us to be committed, responsible, respectful, and safe, take care of your needs, do what you need to do, and we'll get started. So with our virtual PD, if you could, you can blur your background if you would like, but if you want to mute your microphone, and I love that you have your cameras on, if you're comfortable leaving that, that's great. If you have a question or comment, please go ahead and type it in the chat and then I'll stop and we can address that. With our small group, if you um, have a question, feel free to go ahead and interject too. So first of all, I just wanted to look at how we can use Canva for students. I said we would mainly be talking about student use today, but there are a couple of different ways that we could use it. We could have a jigsaw activity where I'm giving this template out to all of my class, and then I assign different words, and then each group would define the word, write the word in a full sentence, write the three, three synonyms, and then find some type of graphic to go along with that. Then I could have a jigsaw activity where students are exposed to all of the different words that were assigned, and they can explain their word to their group. We could do a lab report, where I have a template and then students just fill it in. Uh, the same could happen with a presentation if I wanted students to give a presentation, but I wanna make sure they have certain elements, I could create a, a template for them and they could fill it in. This is a little bit more of an elementary example, but in a card sort, they could take these icons and drag them in, but I could also see in a science class, maybe you are having students categorize something and you want them to put them in different categories and you could do it with this, where you're providing the template to students and then they just have to drag the images into the appropriate column. The other way that I really like using Canva with students is giving them student choice. If you're looking to incorporate more student choice into your classroom, this is a great option. I could, this is a, this example would be an awareness campaign. So maybe I want students to create a product to raise awareness on a cer certain subject. And then I let students choose a template that they want to use. They could do a social media post and a caption. They could create a video. They could do an infographic. You could leave it completely open or just pick five different ways that they could raise awareness. And then Canva has all of these templates. So it's really nice for the teacher that you can use one platform, but still give students the choice to use a variety of um, templates, a variety of options in their project. Just to give you an idea, I, you are both Canva users, so you've probably already noticed, but there are so many different types of templ templates in Canva. There are 60,000 different templates in Canva that teachers have access to through the district account, over 60,000. And these are just some of the different ways that teachers or students could use Canva in the classroom. You are probably familiar with our MTSS framework. Uh, there are multiple ways that Canva can support our MTSS framework. I'm mainly focusing on the evidence-based um, academic instructional priorities, specifically instructional hierarchy, acquisition, automaticity, and application. With these authentic assessments that we're talking about with Canva that students can create, that would really be the application piece. So with 
acquisition, automaticity, and application, we're building that knowledge. And then when they're really fluent in it, they're really comfortable with that information, they can create. So that would be that application piece. There are several others that it can fit into too, such as scaffolding and grouping. With scaffolding, you could provide a graphic organizer for students, like I had in the lab template and or the jigsaw activity. So you could provide scaffolds through Canva templates as well. Our learning intentions for today. Today, we are learning how to use Canva so that students can demonstrate their, their understanding in an authentic manner. You will know that you have learned it when you are able to design and implement a lesson where students are creating on Canva. Today, we're gonna look at what is Canva. We've already kind of covered that a bit. How do I log in and join the district team? What are some different ways that the, we can use Canva to students in workflows? How to use a template with students and then how I can allow students to create from a rubric or from parameters provided by the teacher. The first thing that I would encourage you to check is to make sure that you are part of the district team. One question that I always get is, are my designs private after I join the district team? And they are. Uh, Canva has great options for sharing. However, they will your designs will only be shared if you explicitly check to share them in the settings. By joining the district team, you have access to all of the materials that are sometimes paid features in Canva. As educators, we get them for free. To join the Canyon School District team, you just need to make sure that you have signed in to Canva using your csddocs.org email. You will automatically be added to the Canyon School District team as soon as you sign in with that email. So if you have never used Canva before, you'll just go to canva.com, click login, then choose continue with email, this one right at the bottom. It's best if you don't use that Google button at least the first time that you log in. I had some users that were getting kind of that spinning wheel forever, but it seems to be resolved if we use continue with email. So if you click continue with email, enter your CSD docs and your district email password, you will be in and it automatically joins. Then any future times that you can log in, you can do continue with Google instead. And then if you are already a Canva user, but you've created your account with canyonsdistrict.org instead of CSD docs, you can go into settings and change your email. So if you are in Canva, you'd sign in as you normally do. You click the top right corner where it has your profile picture and then click on settings. And then it gives you the options to change your email. So you would just change it to CSD docs. It will send you an email uh, to your CSD docs. So you'll go there and confirm that it, it is you. You'll automatically, if you log out, log back in using that continue with email and your CSD docs, you'll automatically be joined to the district team. If you get any errors in that, you are welcome to contact your instructional coach. I know some have gotten the a duplicate account exists. Uh, and if that happens, what we'll need to do is delete your other account and we'll get that fixed. So you can either email me, it's kitty.gephart at kenyansdistrict.org, or you can contact your instructional coach if that happens to you. Katie, I have a question. So I, yes, have, an account, I have an account with L, uh, under Albion Middle School, and that's where all my documents are that I've created. So if I change okay. my email there, will those all those documents and other things that I've created go to the CSD docs? I won't yes, lose I'm them. so glad you asked that question. Yes. So it's under your account is under a like a generic school email then? It's probably just my Canyons district one. I don't remember. Okay. Yes. Everything stays there. Um, okay. One thing that you'll notice, I'm going to go back one slide so you can see it, but... Oh yeah, this slide. So this becomes a toggle. So after right. you convert your, your account, what you'll notice is some people think that things have disappeared, 
but it's just that they're on the other team. So if you click right. on this, <laughs> don't actually click because that's my slide. But when you click on that, it will have a drop down that has personal or classroom and yours. It's probably your personal under your Canyon district is how mm -hmm. it'll be labeled. Mm -hmm. And all of the designs are there. Yeah. Is that a paid account? Do you know? No, it's just whatever we used before. Yep before everything will still stay there it's just going to be in the other team so you okay. can just toggle to access them okay my account currently has everything from my canyons district as well as when i switched over to csd docs okay perfect good question i i've had a lot of people that originally joined with canyon school district and have switched over okay so with our workflows there are really three main ways that you can use your um, canva account the first one is just teacher to student so i could create a poster with my classroom rules that i want to print out and put on my wall so the teacher creates the resource the student receives and views the resource it could be the same with a presentation or a video that you create for your students the second option is a teacher created template. This is the lab document that I shared earlier in the example where the teacher creates a Canva template and then the student modifies or a student group because Canva is similar to Google in that you can have a group of students working on a document. So a group of students or a single student would modify that document, add their information, and then they would submit it. The third workflow is the one with student choice, where the teacher would share the goals and expectations, and then the student would create and submit the design on Canvas. I'm going to mainly focus on options two and three. Today, I'll briefly show you one way you could do option one in Canvas, but overall, we're going to spend most of our time on options two and three. So with option two, we have a teacher created template. This is where I really want to make the base for students and then I just want them to modify it. Kind of like a digital worksheet or a digital activity uh, where I am creating the parameters and creating the template for them. This is just gonna be a placeholder for you. I wanted to write out the instructions so that you could see them in case you wanna come back to this presentation, but we're gonna go ahead and switch over to Canvas and do it together. So this is just one of my sandbox courses. And if I go in to my modules and create a new assignment, because I want students to work on this. So I'm just gonna do Canva. So we'll create an assignment just like we always do. And then we are going to add our template into the instructions. This is a little different than if you're familiar with the Google LTI, it uses an external tool. Canva is different in that it uses this app button instead. So to add a template for students, I would want to go in to Canva and create the template that I'm using. So you could see the drop down that I was talking about there. Actually, you know what? This the one I want, I think, is in here. So if this is the one that I want to share with students, this vocabulary word map, I am going to click on, I will create it first in Canva get it to what I want. And then I'm gonna to go to this plugin and select Canva for Education. If this is the first time that you're using the Canva for Education plugin, you'll have to click View All and then select Canva for Education from the bigger list. Here we will see all of my designs. And I'm going to pick this word map. And it gives me the option to either embed into the page or link text. And I'm going to embed into the page because I like for students to see the image. And then it gives me this option, view design only or create a new design for each student. In option one of our 
workflows when I talked about teachers just sharing something for students to view, like the presentation, I might use this view design only if I want them to just click through the slides and see it. But in, in what we're working on now, I want students to be able to edit. So I'm gonna click new design for each student. Oh, this is actually good. <laughs> so I can tell you what I did wrong here. So with our, with these designs, it has to be in your Canyon School District account. It cannot be in your personal team. It has to be in your Canyon School District. So real quick, I'm gonna show you how to move. Let's say, Sandy, you have something in your personal team, but you wanna embed it in Canvas. This is the easiest way. So I'm gonna click share. And here there's an option for template link. So I'll click the template link. I'm just gonna copy it. Then I'm gonna go back to my homepage. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in my Canyon School District team and I'm gonna paste this in. And it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna create a copy? So now what I've done is I've created a copy of my original design that was in my personal team and I put it in my Canyon School District team. So anytime you are embedding a design in Canvas from Canva, it has to be in Canyon School District team or you'll get that error. So let's do this again. And I'm gonna say embed. You'll notice I've got different options now because I was in the correct team. All right, so it gives that little example of what, of what it's gonna look like. I do have sample instructions that you can put for students here on this next slide. So if you are using this with students, you can just copy and paste my instructions so that they are similar for your students and it tells them how to use the template, what to click on and what to do. Cause I would normally put that right in here that says, hey, you're gonna click on this template and then you're gonna edit and submit. On the teacher side, I would fill it out just like I do for every other assignment. Here, we're going to select online and then we're actually clicking two boxes. We are going to choose website URL and file upload. I can enter a due date if I would like. And then we have our assignment for students. Again, they'll just click here when they're ready, they can edit and then submit right in Canvas. The other thing that's really nice is that for you on the teacher side, everything is going to show up in Canvas SpeedGrader for you. So when you are ready to grade, their work is gonna show up on the left and you can quickly use this rubric on the right to make grading really fast. So that's another advantage of using it within Canvas. I thought you might like to see what it looks like. Oh, I thought you might like to see what it looks like from the student view on uh, for students. Uh, it looks like my video didn't come through. I will, I'll pull them um, so that you can see that. But students navigate to the assignment. They're gonna click on it. They edit it within Canva. If it does ask them to sign in, they sign in in the same way you do. So they'll use their CSV docs, username and password. And then when they are ready to submit, they just click on, this one shows it a little bit better. When they are ready to submit, they'll go back to Canvas, they'll click this more button and then Canva for education, and it'll bring up all of their Canva files and they'll choose the design that they just created and hit submit. So I think it works, they can design within Canvas, but I almost think it's better when they open a new tab, they design in Canva and then they come back to Canvas to submit, just so things are bigger for them as they're working within Canva. Okay, what questions do you have so far? Any? Okay. Um, oh, I go ahead. Ha I have a question. I, uh -huh. I follow your steps and I, and I got that part. 
But this week I tried to use it for the students to submit something from Canvas. Okay. Canvas and it looks like I need to add the app on my Canvas account. And it's asking me for like a key, you know, like some code. Oh, interesting. Um, so I can add the so, app, right? but it's asking me for a consumer key and a share secret key. So the uh -huh. Canva app is added on the district level. So you shouldn't have to add it to your class um, mm -hmm. by going into that app store. It should already be added for everyone in the district that wants to use it. Uh, so you shouldn't have to go in and add it yourself. Yeah. Um, because when I go to settings and I go to check on the apps, it wasn't there. So that's what I was trying to add with it, but maybe. So if you go, mm -hmm. um, if students click on more and Canva for education, they should have that there oh, okay. um, but it's without you doing anything. Okay. So, you As know, I am, it's because I am used to do the flip grid and in flip yes. grid, we did have to have to do that step. So then when I create an assignment, I can put that the students can submit it in, in flip grid, but I don't have to do that on Canva. Exactly. You do not have to do that. The other thing, everyone's used to choosing external tool for the submission yeah. type. Uh -huh. And with this one, you do online instead of external tool. Okay. Oh, there, maybe my videos. Okay, here's the student submission process. It's working now. So you'll see this is from a student account. I have went in and this is what it looks like. This is from a template. So you'll see there's my word map. So I'm scrolling down, I'm clicking on the name. It'll open Canva in a new window. It recognized their login credentials in this case, in most cases it will, if it does ask them to log in, they'll just use their CSD docs, but it should know who it is because they're logging in from Canvas. So they don't even have to do that. So the student can edit. So everyone will get their own copy in this example, similar to how the Google LTI works, where it's just making a copy for each student. It has this publish to Canvas button, but that's a little deceiving just because it, um, it looks like you could just click it and it's gonna go to Canvas. But if you read the instructions, it says return to Canvas and then submit. So that's what I'm doing here. You click on more, they choose Canva for education. And then you'll see that their Canva window shows up below. And then if they choose recent, it's a quick way to find what they just edited. And then they'll click submit and then it shows up for you in SpeedGrader. I will post these slides on Canva for Education. So if you want to use this video with your students so they can see what the submission uh, looks like you can just use this this video to post in your Canvas assignment. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. So the these are the sample instructions that you could copy and paste into your Canvas assignment. Just change it to make it fit your assignment. But it gives the general steps for students. And then the last option that we talked about was for student choice. So if you really want to give your students more freedom and allow them to choose the template instead of you creating it, you'll create a new assignment in Canvas and add the details. But you do have to tell students exactly what you're looking for in this. Since we are giving them more freedom in choosing their template, we want them to understand what are you grading for. So I always recommend a rubric with these types of assignments so that students can know exactly what is expected of them and so that they will have a guide um, in their project creation. For this one, it's really the same steps as what we talked about before. 
you're still going to create an assignment. You'll enter in the instructions. You just don't have that template step. And then you'll select website URL and file uploads as the two types of submission. Here is a sample of instructions that you could include for students that you could copy and paste into your Canvas assignment or reword to fit the needs. And then again, for student submission, they're going to choose more Canva for education when they're ready to submit. Then here's our Canva and SpeedGrader that you can quickly grade all of your assignments. All right, so if I go back to this. If we were to create an assignment that has that does not have the template, we would just put in those instructions right here for how students will get to Canva. They have two options. They can go to that more and select Canva down below, or they can choose Canva for education from the left menu if you have it unhidden in your navigation. So by clicking that, it takes them to Canva and they can start designing. So both are options for them. When you are ready to add that rubric, you can just click add rubric and start creating right there. Okay, do we have any questions so far on creating one from a template or letting students create from scratch? No? All right. Well, in our last slide, I just have a couple of reminders of why it's important to use rubrics. We've already talked a lot about how it helps students to complete an assignment or an authentic assessment. But the other ways that it helps from the teacher side would be that it makes grading easier and more efficient for you as you look through their projects. But it also helps with equity in grading and consistent marking as you are going through all of the assignments, it makes it so that you are grading for content, uh, grading to make sure that students are meeting those expectations and the standards that are set. All right, if you have, I just as a last thing, I wanted to show you where some of these resources are on Canyons U. If you're not familiar with how to find Canyons U, you can just Google Canyons U can um, Canyons U and it'll come up as the second Google result. And that there is a section for Canva and we have Canva for education and it has how to create an account, but also how to use it with students. So all of these materials are right here. If you look or a recording of the session will be under our bite size PD. I'll go ahead and stop the recording, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to help um, with those.